Let's get this party started. Let me put these earrings on so I can get started and give you an update on what's been going on. Welcome back YouTube, it's your girl Magda Civil. For those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. This channel mainly focuses on health and fitness. I do a lot of sit down video, exercise videos, speak on the top foods that we think are healthy but really are not. Stay tuned. Beat me up, Scotty. Welcome Beat back YouTube, it's Magda Civil. Let's speak on the top mistakes that people often make when they're trying to lose weight. Are counting calories important? And how do I determine my calorie intake for my body type? If you find that type of content interesting and if this is what you're looking for, please make sure you go ahead and subscribe and hit that subscribe button. But currently I am nine months pregnant. And yes, you guys, I know for those of you who've been following me already, you're excited and you want to be with me throughout my journey, my pregnancy journey. So for the most part, I want to tell you what's going on. I want to give you an update. This is going to be a brief video. Ralph and I, we were planning to have a water birth, but unfortunately those plans are not going to follow through simply because of the surgery I had back in February 2017. I had a laparoscopic myomectomy. I'm getting surgery today to get all five removed. I'm a little nervous because it's my first surgery ever. First time in a hospital, I'll be in a hospital for like a day and then they're gonna release me. Uh, right now I have my mom's in the car, my husband, he's driving me to the hospital now and I'll keep you posted. The doctors don't wanna take the risk of me pushing. They're saying that having a vaginal birth could put me at risk for my uterus rupturing and even worse, potentially dying. So with that being said, I'm scheduled for a C-section. Remember I told you guys, it just depends on my situation. In the blog, I mentioned that. This is what I'm currently looking like at six months. This is definitely an amazing experience. Ralph and I, we're gonna see the midwife later on today because I am going to have a water birth, God willing, if everything goes well. Because actually, my situation is a little bit different only because I had uterine fibroids prior and I had surgery to remove five fibroids. That's where the scarring is. Well, you see some of the scarring like on the side there. That's one, it's, it was, um, Lapro, laparoscopic um, myomectomy that I had done. So these are some of the scarring from the surgery. They, it wasn't really invasive. As you can see, it's very small, like um, cuts. They made incisions, very small incisions that they made. How am I feeling about this? You know, I was fighting, going back and forth, trying to see if there was another alternative. It's coming up in two weeks. I'm actually really nervous because I did not Initially, I didn't want to have a C-section. Most medical facilities, what they tend to do is they push for the C-section because they know it's more money. Even with knowing that I went with a facility that caters to vaginal birth, that caters to natural birth, I still wanted to make sure that these individuals had my best interest at heart. When they said, Magda, we have to move forward with the C-section, I don't want anybody robbing me of having a vaginal birth a vaginal birth because they want more money. I watched a video called The Business of Giving Birth and Ricky Lake was the host of this video and this video really resonated with me because it showed me what goes on in the hospital. Spittles are businesses. They want those beds filled and emptied. They don't want women hanging around in the labor room. Technology is technology. It's not stopping. So if you're gonna have good stuff, you might as well use it to get the best outcome. Maternity care in the United States is in crisis. People don't have the information. Medical decisions are being made for monetary and legal reasons, not because they're good for the mother and the baby. This is Pitocin, which is the medication given through the IV that causes contractions. Just check that she's on pit. Just make sure that yeah. she's on pit. And I asked to keep upping the pit. And if you're uncomfortable, we can always give you more. Is this an improvement or are we making things worse? birth rarely almost never <laughs> everywhere else in the world you see midwives attending 70 or 80 percent of all the births and the united states stands alone what they do is they give the pitocin to speed up the contractions right 
and once you're in pain and you can't take it anymore, then they give you the epidural and the epidural slows down the contractions and it slows down the birthing process. So what they do is they go back and forth with the Pitocin and the epidural. The baby goes into distress and the doctors don't tell you that this is the cause of the distress. They just say, uh, so mom, baby heart rate is dropping. We have to rush and do an emergency C-section. So I didn't want that. I wanted a doctor that would have my best interest at heart. I didn't want a doctor that would just look over my charts and say, ah, uh, she already had a myomectomy. Ah, you know what, Magda? You can't have a regular vaginal birth. And I didn't want that. So long story short, I went with a group or I went with a medical facility that really caters to vaginal birth. And what they're saying is, Magda, you would need to schedule a C-section. So at 38 weeks, my C-section is scheduled. I'm currently 36 weeks and I'm as pregnant. How am I feeling? I am feeling great, truthfully. I'm blessed that this is a situation that the baby is healthy and she's growing and she's strong and um, she has a personality. Every time we go in for an ultrasound, she's moving her mouth and she's touching her toes. So I can't wait, to, I, honestly, I can't wait to meet her. Um, my husband and I, we're really excited about that. As far as what I've been eating throughout this journey, I've pretty much been eating the same way prior to getting pregnant. It's very hard to break habit. In regards to the cravings, I did have like sweet tooth cravings, just Philly cheesesteaks and Mexican food. Good, most of the food that I really do consume is at home. If I don't eat food or if I don't buy um, canned food or food that's pre-packaged, if I don't consume that, I'm not going to have her consume that either. I do plan on breastfeeding. When she's able to eat regular food, we're gonna steam her food. We're going to um, blend her food. I'm not a big fan of buying can or those little Gerber jars, simply because I feel like she's going to get the best nutrition if I actually blend, you know, and prepare her foods here. So Ralph and I, we did do, we did record a lot of videos to be prepared for this moment and to give you guys content so that you can still work out, you can still have stuff to watch while I'm going through this transition. We're gonna have a few up-to-date videos that we're going to be posting, but most of the videos right after the C-section or just for the first a couple of weeks or maybe that first month is going to be pre-recorded exercise videos for beginners advanced and intermediate and we work so hard to put this stuff together you guys who are watching this currently please make sure that you're active and you're engaging with other people who are commenting and just to make sure that you inform them like hey you know, she did say that she was going to upload a lot of pre-recorded stuff because she just gave birth. For those of you who are wondering if they can exercise while they are pregnant, that's something that you really need to, need to speak to your doctor about. Simply, I mean, if you have a background in exercising, what my doctor told me was, I'm fine. If my body's already acclimated to that type of activity, so I wouldn't be at risk or I wouldn't be putting myself in danger. But for those of you who are trying to implement something new, speak to your doctor first. That is about it. So thank you guys so much for watching the video. I hope you guys please continue to watch my channel because YouTube is so hard nowadays on YouTube. And um, as far as getting the views, YouTube is mostly based off of watch time minutes. Um, I would really love if you guys would continue to engage on the channel, give us a thumbs up, write comments, uh, ask questions, because these are the things that YouTube look at so that this channel doesn't disappear. I, I feel like we have, the people who are, uh, are subscribed to the channel have subscribed for a reason. And I want to really help those who really need smile so if you feel like you have someone that you know that will benefit from this channel as well please don't forget to share the content there's a lot of the stuff that I upload and most people tend to ask me these questions like, am I gonna do a beginners workout am I gonna do this this stuff I have a lot of videos uploaded on YouTube so go in go on my channel 
go back and watch the videos even if it was an old video that really resonated with you you need this and you need some re-motivation go back and watch it again even i sometimes go back and watch it and i get amazed at some of the content because some of the videos that i've uploaded in the past was during the beginning of my pregnancy also i'm also going to show you how to widen your hips naturally of course it's all genetics we all know genetics play a major part Let's measure and see where I'm at as far as my a fatty steak or something like that. And if I'm eating a lean meat, I would predominantly have lean meat with uh, carbohydrates, brown rice. And I was only one month pregnant recording the video and I didn't want to tell anyone at the time due to the fact that prior to this um, pregnancy, I had a miscarriage. So I didn't want to just let everybody know so soon or so early on i wanted to make sure that i can bear the child prior to let you guys know so thank you so much for tuning in don't be shy to message me i'll be here to answer your questions and i'll see you next time take care